Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Good Times. I'm your host, Damon Epps. What if your office was also the beginning and end of your daily bike ride? Today, I'd like to introduce Josh Kyles, the developer and mastermind behind the first bikeable building, and learn how he connected some of the most creative people to design and build the ledger, a first of its kind workspace. First off, Josh, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, this is you are the first guest, so that we're going to knock off all the rust with you. Perfect. And it's good because you're not only uh, a really talented dude, you're also pretty pretty awesome and pretty Thank cool you. so far. Thank you. I don't know either one of them. So, yeah. so, so far. I showed uh, up. Yeah, you showed up. That's <laughs> all that really matters. That's 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 100% what I needed today. So um, first off, the reason why I am even doing this and why I'm here, obviously I'm a, well, not obviously, but you know, I came here. I'm a reality TV producer in LA, um, met someone. I, uh, you know, came to this town to, um, based on the the information that she gave me. She was like, oh, Stuart and Thomas are going to try to create Austin, Texas, along with the other Waltons, and everybody's building some cool stuff. From that moment, I came, I visited, and I was like, wow, this is the most incredible place I've ever seen. And um, Or not the most incredible place I've ever seen, but you saw what this place is going to be. I immediately rented an apartment, and now I'm living downtown. And I am. And when I first got here, they were like, oh, look at all this really cool stuff. One of them happened to be they were like, oh, that building right there is going to be the first bikeable building in the world. Am I crazy? We can't think? find another one yet, but yeah. Okay. We, we, we have to be cautious how we say that, but we have not found another well, one. Well, you know what? I like I like that Bentonville goes for it. You yeah. guys just claim a lot of stuff really quick <laughs> and just like why it might as well set into it. But since the, I don't even, I, you guys may have barely broke ground when I first, was a year ago. I don't know what it looked uh, like a year ago. We broke ground, it would have been two, about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. Well, it still was not a big mountain a uh, year ago. No. It was still, it was still in the making for sure. And I've been driving past it every day. And I have a lot of questions for you, yeah. obviously. But the the most important one, I think, was when someone told me, Oh, we're building the uh, first bike open building, and I was like, "Oh, that's really cool." But what does that even mean? So, um, I'm glad you're on the show. So yeah. let's just dive into what the ledger is all about. Um, the ledger it's 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 funny because it is the first bike open building. That's what it gets labeled a lot. But it actually was. Um, I've been developing here in Bentonville for over 20 years. Um, I my senior year at the U of A, I started putting the roads in at Rainbow Curve, and for years we did. Um, traditional real estate where it was a uh, garden style, single tenant. Um, Hello. Come on in. Are you guys recording? Yeah, recording, but go, come on in. I'm sorry, I hear because it feels like it's happening again. No, it's okay. Well, we just, <laughs> he just kind of came in and started talking. I was like, well, we got to start. We got to just start. Did I just ruin this? No. The whole thing. You ruined the whole thing. <laughs> I get to go home. Uh, I just want you to know the GM just walked in and he's ruined the whole thing, guys. No, I'm just kidding. No, not at all. You should be not interviewing Juan. We are, like, well, eventually we are going to been. You talk about somebody bringing something to Bentonville. That's, you know, hospitality that they bring from different places. You were talking about what's different in Bentonville earlier. I don't know if we were recording yet or not. Yeah, we are. But all these people that bring what they've brought from other places, that's what's making Bentonville different. Is what, what have I learned and what have I seen done right? It's going back to the buildings. We saw these buildings were being built and the tenants were changing so much. And then they would have this 20,000 square foot building and need 10. And it was a running joke for years that we should have owned the dumpster company because we were renovating and tearing up stuff all the time. And we were like, okay, there's got to be a better way. So I sold all of it. I said, I'm going to start over and I'm going to do it at a larger scale. And I want to do it where I don't have to lose my tenants, where they can stay with me, whether their business gets bigger or smaller, because a lot of the people in this community do business with one client. And it's usually their biggest client in the country. Right. Um, and so, but sometimes their business grows or they have acquisitions and sometimes they sell off companies. So at no fault of their own, they would have to look at other buildings because I wouldn't have space. So I was like, uh -huh. there's got to be a way that we can keep them because they're good people. They're good tenants. And that way they can still stay with us, but not have to move. That's where the initial start was. And I got told to go and uh, a friend of mine who believes in Bentonville heavily said, hey, why don't you go up to New York and meet Adam Newman, who has a company called WeWork. So I went up and okay. started talking to them, and we realized that they were on to something. Um, there was a lot of smart people at WeWork. They, they were terrible at accounting, but they were very, very innovative and smart and had a lot of young talent. And they had figured out a utiliz utilization of space and how people didn't need to sit at their desk all day long from 9 to 5 because it actually made them tired. Right. 
And they said, hey, what if somebody works in five different spaces in the day? And they realized that people left energetic with more energy than they came with just by changing light, sound, all the different stimuli that you have or your senses. So that's what part of their workplace was. And you see all the stuff on the news and the documentaries, and a lot uh-huh. of that gets lost. But what they started to do was you could take a company and you could shrink them by 40 50% of their f- footprint, which is a huge capital expenditure for these companies. Yeah, for sure. And have better space that the people enjoyed going to. So when we started the building, we had we figured it was going to take us 10 years to teach everybody this. And then probably six months after construction and started. And you mean teach, teach people teach companies, in the business? And- teach companies to say, hey, we don't, you know, Juan doesn't need his seat every day at that desk. There could be desks here. You hear that, Juan? Um, we, don't yeah. need you, we don't need your seat. At but the you desk don't have anymore. to be at that seat. You know, <laughs> you're going to have to learn not to have, you can't have your picture there. But what if they shared it? Because, you know, at the time there was companies flirting with three day work weeks and there was com- countries, you know, there's mm-hmm. other countries now that are looking at shorter work weeks. And then uh, probably six, eight months into, we went through the WeWork stuff and we work, we ended up parting ways with them because they were on a different path um, mm-hmm. as a whole. But we learned a lot from it. And actually, when they um, ended up dispersing a lot of their people, we, we went and talked to a lot of the talent we saw from their company. Our architects are from WeWork. Um, this was going to be the first ground up WeWork in the world. So, oh, really? Yeah. I was they, wondering about that because WeWork, one of those strange things I always thought about WeWork, knowing they're like, like they never owned their buildings. They um, rented buildings and then they- And they, it was space in a building. Yep. It wasn't even the whole building most of the time. Yeah. And so the architects, these people that had true beliefs in like changing workspace, um, some of them are ours. So Michelle Rochkin, uh, he was the main CEO. And then under him was Christian Callahan and Harucha, Haruka Hariuchi, sorry. And they believed that this could be done. But one of their big complaints was also that all their beautiful things they were doing, they had 75 million square feet, but nobody ever could see it unless they were members. So it would be 40 floors up. And nobody would ever know what was going on. So if you see the building now, that got translated a lot into, let's open the building up. Let's turn it inside mm-hmm. out, where the activity is on the outside and the inside and where the community can feel what we're doing. So if we could create this hub where Fortune 5 companies could be next to somebody who could afford one seat. And they may sit and have a cup of coffee together at the common space and talk about something, and it could help both of them. It may right. help the, the person that's in this part of their life or this part. And what if we created that hub for people to come and collaborate? Um, and that was kind of the concept. And we thought we were going to be here 10 years trying to teach everybody that you don't have to, you don't have to sit in that desk every day. And then um, COVID came along. And, and who came along? COVID. Oh, COVID came along. Yeah. And then COVID came along and sped it up by 10 years. Because oh, yeah, all of a sudden, so. every company in the world said, oh, yeah, we don't need to be here every day. Yeah. Well, would you come back three days, maybe two or three days? So it kind of just made us look a lot smarter than we were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because now everybody's going, oh, yeah, this is what our whole company's doing. Uh-huh. And we're like, so it's kind of the shift that the, the marketing and sales got a lot easier. Um, it was one good thing that came from COVID, I guess, is that our marketing and sales got a lot easier because the companies, no matter how big they are, we, we have calls all the time with huge companies. And their corporate is pushing towards us because they're like, okay, we know we're getting everybody back five days a week. We can get it back three. We need to utilize that space where there's somebody in that seat all the time, uh-huh. um, where our conference rooms don't sit empty because, you know, cost of a conference room, some of these conference rooms will cost half a million dollars in capital expenditures, and they sit empty all but one quarter, one one time a quarter they have a board meeting there. So the concept is, is that we've got 32 conference rooms that anybody from the public can go on the app and rent by the hour. And if you want to have, say you have a great idea and you want to pitch it to investors, mm-hmm. but you don't want to do it at a Starbucks or you don't want mm-hmm. to go to the hotel and rent a, a little dark room somewhere, you can rent the six floor boardroom that looks like $10 million view up there on the top floor by the hour for 80 bucks an hour and have your meeting there and and, and be on the same footing and have a chance where people are looking at what you're presenting and not where you're at. Right. That I, I you know, so... The reason why I'm here is because of COVID, you know, yeah. because in television, I didn't really, you know, I travel a lot. When a show pops up, I'll go and produce that show. COVID happens, but I'm always the field guy. I'm always the guy on location. But mm-hmm. the only reason why I lived in Los Angeles is because of meetings yeah. and all of this thing. But all, and then when COVID hit, all the editors and people like that and people that do post production were the people that had to sit in house. But now that COVID happened, they've all like, and all these production companies realize like, oh, I don't have to have, I don't have to have like, 
a huge building with 40 editors because the editors want to sit at home. They all have kids and now they can sit at home and edit a TV show. Um, so they changed all the rules. So now all of us are starting to move out. I love WeWorks. I, I actually had been to a bunch of WeWorks and, you know, being here and being part of this community has been something that's really special in and of itself. Um, it was funny because the Miguel, the co-owner of WeWork came down here and, and, my, and Adam came a couple of times and they both came down here and it was funny because they tried the concept and a lot of their shirts say community at WeWork and they tried to instill community in these places where people would walk by and not say hello to each other um, in some of these cities. So they were trying to instill community but when they came here, it was funny because they were like, you have the community. We just don't have a place for it. The community's here because- I mean, everybody says hello. Everybody when you says live in hello. Hollywood, like there's not one part, like people exactly. will come and say hello to your dog and ignore you. Yeah. Um, but so for them, yeah, they were like- It's really funny. The hard work's already done. Like you have the community. You just got to build the building. Like <laughs> yeah, it, it, for it's, sure. the, it's the complete opposite. It's the nicest place in the world. Uh, it really is it the is. nicest place. It really is the nicest place in the world. Um, let's, let's dive into like the biking part of, sure. you know, first off, this is- now labeled the biking capital yeah. of the world. Um, mountain bike capital of the world. Mountain bike capital of the world. It's trademark. You got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is trademarked, <laughs> which I found very funny. Um, is it the mount, Is it the mountain bike capital of the world? You know, if it's not, it's I know some people that are going to make sure it is, and I have complete faith in them. Yeah. They I, uh, follow through on what they say. So uh, it may not have been when I first heard that, in my opinion, which is a humble opinion, but I also knew who said it, and I have no doubt that it'll get there. Yeah, I mean, and I, I got to tell you, I went mountain biking not long ago, and I shit my pants. Excuse my language, <laughs> but I, I did. I freaked out a little bit, and I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, whatever. Just recently, I kind of like got past the hump, and because I used to mountain bike in college, yeah. Um, and then I think these I, trails are a little different. They're totally different. Um, but in Texas, you know, it was a little bit flat. When you get to California, everything's just uphill and downhill, and it, there's just mm -hmm. nothing fun. And it's not like I'm the most in shape person in the world. Uh, but now I'm. It's in, it's so cool what, I mean, everything here is being built by the greatest engineers in the world. Every, every time I look around, it's not like the buildings that are happening, much like you and your structure, they're not just throwing things up. Um, people are really taking their time and really trying to figure out how to make this place great. And to see these trails and to see what they're doing to the in, to this mountain biking world, um, have you always been a mountain biker or is it? No, I have not. Um, I did when they, they built the very first slaughter pen. I lived over the by there and I, I'd done it a little bit in college like everybody else. And it was just a rooty old trail down in Fayetteville. That was probably mostly where the homeless people just walk back in the woods right. more than reality. Um, but it's really cool because I think what I've, I, how I describe it to people is the intentionality is that there's intentionality behind Big every trail. Yeah, it sure. is. I had to look it up in the dictionary. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, because uh, I'm going to go back. <laughs> Can you look that up? Where <laughs> but yeah. if you think about it, every trail, there's a purpose for it. So I love, like, I don't know if you met Gary Vernon yet. He's, uh -uh. he's Oz Trails. He has been since the Okay. Beginning. Is O'Reilly? Um, is Gary it? Vernon. No, okay. Gary Got Vernon. And, and Oz Trails and that group and Trailblazers um, is the nonprofit that builds them. They sub it out to a lot of companies. But the guys, the passion these guys have um, – you know, like Woody at Progressive Trail Design and that. That's all they, you know, do. And they have a science. They have the degree of what that ramp should be to make it where you, when you hit it right, you jump, whether you hit it perfect or not. And I love that they use the trails to connect everything. So there's a, and more and more you're starting to see that through uh -huh. Bella Vista and Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas as a whole, but especially up there. And it's neat that, Oh, because I'll be, you'll be, you'll ride a trail 50 times and you'll be like, it's kind of weird how just, and then all of a sudden, it connects. Something happens, and there's this one little piece that falls, and you're like, "Oh, this was meant to take me over there." It's, that's it. Just um, happened last week. It, it happens. It just happened. And last week. like I said, later twenty years, and it's just amazing that the 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 planning and the layout and the intentionality behind everything. And that's that's what we took into the building. Um, is that we wanted that we didn't want to take away from the community. We wanted to be and and give back to the community the parts we saw there was gaps. So we we don't have a sit down restaurant in our, our building. Two hundred and thirty thousand feet don't have a sit down restaurant because there's forty of them within a half a mile of our building. Walk. I know the people that own them. Go have lunch right. with them. You know what I mean? Let's let's give back to them. Um, we'll have a grab and go because sometimes everybody doesn't have time to you know get a sit and eat. But why take away from the community? There's so many wonderful. We don't have a fitness center. People ask me, well, "Where's your fitness center?" And I point to where we're sitting to Blake Street and say, "Hey." 
Go walk Blake Street. Right. Why would I do a fitness center? This is the most amazing fitness facility it's I've seen. pretty insane. Yeah. I mean, so why try to take away from the community that's here? It's like we want to be in a claw. We want to be the, the, the part that's if you need to have a meeting or you need a place to sit on a work and good internet or you need an office, that's what we'll take care of. Um, and event space. We've got some event space coming in too. That's really cool. So, but the bikeable part of it, walk me through just the yeah. biking part of, of the building. The bi and so the ramps were, did two things. Um, I, uh, I am an old school downtown Bentonville boy. Um, and I, I love what downtown Bentonville is. And I've, I've been one of them that have said, we need to grow. I believe in growth. And I think the growth that we have is amazing, but we need to be good stewards of that growth. So the ramps did two things. They're really cool to have a ride up. But it also, if you look for Main Street, which is very special at any town, Main Street, the step backs of that 24 feet, because the ramps are 12 and a half feet, and they're switchbacks, so they're 25 feet. But then 25-foot step backs every floor make it where when you walk down Main Street, there's not this huge 80-foot wall. Because when we were talk, walking down New York City one time with one of the architects, I told him, he goes, you just don't like New York a whole lot. And I said, man, it's not my favorite because... I get to see the sun for an hour a day. And you, you live where I live now, mm -hmm. I see the sun all day. Right. So I didn't want to be the person that started to take that away. So the step okay. backs made it where when you walk down, you just didn't see this 80-foot glass wall. It was step back, so you can barely see the floor above it. So it looks like a story building when you're walking by it. Oh, that's interesting. I, it's funny you say that because I've gone past it every day, and you have the parking garage, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's before the building. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit of an illusion because, and because I would drive past it. I mean, I literally every single, probably six times a day, I'm going past it on my bike. Um, and just until, because somebody goes, oh, it's huge. And I go, is it? And I looked at it just yesterday. It's they, massive. They did their job, though, because it doesn't. Now, the parking deck is an 80 foot wall. I ain't going to lie. That yeah, is, it is a parking deck. We tried to make the colors complement the natural copper that's yep. on the building, but it is a parking deck. Um, I've, we have yet to figure out. We'll work on that one next time. Um, it's beautiful, I think, for a parking deck, but it's a parking deck. But Main Street, that up and down Main Street, and it's being redone right now. The city's redoing Main Street. Um, I think there's just something special about that. And I, uh, Now, with that, though, with the ramps, the ramps are public. So during business hours, the public can walk up and down them ramps and enjoy the art that's in the ramps. They can walk up and down, and it gives energy to the building. Because if you're sitting in your office, you see people moving back and forth on bikes, and back and forth walking in that. That energy feeds through to everybody. Um, and is there going to be – what is there public access to certain things that um, – Yeah, so the first floor has a breezeway, and there's a walk-up window with uh, serving things like Gunsumer in Austin that I love down there. And um, Airship, Mark Bray and Airship are going to have the coffee shop and a bar okay. the, in the evenings um, right there in the lobby. And it's got a big – Two-story atrium, um, walk-up windows. So you are so going to have a bar. You can bike up to it, walk up to it. Yeah, it will have a bar. Um, it will have coffee, um, maybe smoothies. Who knows what Mark will do. Him and his team are amazing. We, He's another guy, a local person that um, I tell people the other day, I was talking to somebody, I like to do business with good people. Right. Mark and his team are great people. Um, Mark's a great guy. You know, And so it's fun to be able to give him a venue to say, look, man, go shine. Let's, you know, here's here's – Here's your canvas. Let's see what you can do. That's 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 really cool. So yeah, the airstrip, like I've I've been going out to Kohler now yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like, amazing, and, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like it's you know a coffee shop where you can't drive to and yeah. you have to bike to. I mean, all these things are so unique for um for what's happening. And so there's also specialized that's going in downstairs that's, as well. We, we wanted we couldn't have a bikeable building without a bike company. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to get to meet uh, Sam Benedict, and I may screw his title up. I think he's president of Mount. I don't know what he is. Uh, <laughs> out in Santa Cruz, Morgan Hill. Um, and him and Mike Sanier, the owner of it, uh, were close. And we, we, I've got to know them guys, and they believe in Bentonville. Um, they truly believe Bentonville is something special. Uh, Sam comes here all the time with his family. I become good friends with Sam. And when we started really looking at the building, they said we want to be a part of it. And I said, Well, I want a bike company that'll be there for people and give back to the community. So they're going to locate one of their experience centers here in Bentonville. There's one in Santa Cruz and one in Boulder, and the third one in the world will be here in Bentonville. And what is it, What is an experience, experience center? Experience center is, it's not really, maybe have a little bit of retail if you forget your gloves or something, but they're not there to compete with the local businesses. They're there for if you say, I'm going to spend, I'm going to drop 15 grand on a bike. This is my bike of a lifetime I want to buy. They may say, hey, why don't you go to Bentonville? They have 
all different types of terrain. You can get a good short downhill run in. You can get enduro. You can get all these different types in Bentonville that you can't get in different places that may have just one. Go there, ride the four or five different bikes that fit that class and figure out which one's best for you. They'll spec you out. They'll fit you to it. Send it back to your local shop and be sitting there waiting for you when you get home. Wow. Um, and then when people come to Bentonville, they may not ever been on a bike. And I want to be able to go go down to the Experience Center, run down there. They teach them the safety. They give them the helmets. They put them on an e-bike. And I dare you to ride an e-bike and not smile. And they ride around and see Bentonville in a way that's unique. to that, That's Bentonville. That is Bentonville. Whenever people come to town, first thing I do is I um, have a fleet of e-bikes. And I throw them on a bike and say, let's go. You want you want to see Bentonville? You do it from a bike. Yeah, um, I agree. I I I bought two e bikes and I bought two more just because I wanted my friends to go with me. That and experience, I, the people, the smiles they have. I, it's it's I I I truly don't understand why. I understand having a mountain bike and I'm yeah. gonna buy one soon and figure out. And I can't believe how much money they are, but we're <laughs> gonna figure that out. Um, but I also don't know why every single person doesn't have just some clinker um, e bike. I'll drop hyper e-bikes on walmart.com <laughs> just they're like six hundred dollars and now i've gotten 10 people to buy them um and they're the greatest thing in the world but i i truly don't know why there's not like electric cruisers cruising all over this place and there's just hardly room for traffic i just i i really i feel like it's coming but well some of us um so i ride a uh they have what's it's called e-bikes but they're not fully bikes they're like half e-bikes they're like time and a half but yeah they're, E mountain bikes, e mountain bikes. Yeah. So a lot of the bikes you see around here, you don't know they are because you can't tell, but they are e bikes. So for like me, that's what I ride every day. I have a commuter I never touch because I ride my e mountain bike because if I'm going somewhere like and I just all of a sudden be like, man, I want to hop off on the trail for two seconds. I got an extra fifteen yeah. minutes. You can go, and me and uh, the guy that used to be at the chamber, Graham Cobb, would laugh because you'd see our pants rolled up and our backpacks on. We'd be in, in full out work clothes <laughs> and he'd be out there hitting he had 15 minutes for the next meeting you could catch 15 minutes that it, it really it's it's really funny because it, it is a little bit like like the cala i mean because it really does feel like a not a surfing community but there is that element to it and it has that outdoorsy yeah. thing and it has that community too where there's very few times that, that people have a flat out here that 10 people don't stop to help them it's it's it's, it's, it's that's the community man you're right it's a lot like the surfing community or yeah, it's it's this has been really kind of fun. Like, you know, I told somebody, hey, I wanted to do this and whatever, yeah. and I turned down some jobs and I was like, you know, I'm I'm doing this because I keep meeting such interesting people, but I feel like the community doesn't know these people. Like mm -hmm. I feel like like everybody drives by the ledger and everybody's like, Oh, it's the bikeable building, but nobody knows who it is and nobody knows anything about did you think of it? Are you the are you the sole creator of no, the first there's so many No, 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 no. There's so many talented people that have pieces in this. Uh the, you know, the architects, the other, the rest of the ownership group. We, the, the, I am the person that actually is just sitting here today. I probably, I have more. Of Are a you the one that thought of the bikeable building or? Is you uh, no, that was another one of the owners and my architect when I was not with them in New York. Okay. Uh, they called yeah. me, honestly, they called me up and said, Hey, we're going to put bike ramps on the building. And I was like, well, we're going to do what? <laughs> what? <laughs> we're going to do what? And now the building wouldn't be without it. But that to the point is that the whole group was collaborative. Um, even we, we approach this building differently. Um, even the contractors, Napoltz is our main contractor, and I know Nick and his family, and Jake, they're great people. Um, third generation contractors in Arkansas here. Um, and we went to him and said, okay, we wanted, I want, I'm going to do this different. I'm not going to hard bid everything. I want the best subs we, that are in the market. Who are the best and going to be here? And let's talk to them and say, okay, we know on this size of project, here's what you need to make. And let's, put them in the room and they actually sat in the room for hours, probably hundreds of hours with the architects designing the building. And we got feedback from the HVAC guys and the electrical guys that actually were doing the work in the, the plans. So it wasn't somebody sending out plans going and some guys sitting there saying, this is what's going to be. It was a collaboration from the beginning and it created this sense. And it should be that this is something special and different. And that's why when you walk the building, the intentionality of everything the pipe conduit is something stupid, but if you look at the electrical conduit, when they bend and turn, they all match exactly the same because I've watched them rip them out if they don't because that's pride, and they want to be able to bring their kids back. And it, it, it was it was something that from every aspect of it, it was thought through, thought through again. We never rushed this project. Um, this is a 100-year project. This was not done. It'll never sell. It's rent the operating agreement. This is something that was done to be done right and to hopefully – 
start setting the bar. There's been so many wonderful things done in Bentonville, and we want to keep stepping that up that we can, best we can with our part. And I want to see what comes next, like what somebody else does. Let's let's because it's great for the community. All these things that we push the boundaries on is the, is amazing for the community. And we we never sat in the room and we had this saying. There was two sayings we had said pretty much every meeting, is that everybody has the same seat at the table. And if, but if you're not contributing, we'll ask you to leave the table. <laughs> yeah, but everybody's fair. seat was the same. Mm-hmm. Whether you were the guy that was literally digging the ditch that morning to run a sewer pipe, or you were the world-renowned architect, the seats were the same at the table. Nobody, nobody was over anybody. And it, it really was a neat collaboration. I love to just sit back and watch what came of it. So that's, that's interesting. I know we had this conversation um, when we briefly met. Um, but you took a lot of pride in the fact that that all the workers from the bottom to the top have yeah. such pride yeah. in this building. One of my favorite moments was I was running. I was going for a run on a Saturday. And we purposely, it, it joins to the park. So the other side of the building that faces A is a shear wall. And it was intentionally done over there so that there's privacy. So if you have private stuff in a conference room in that, people aren't walking up and down the ramp. So there's a side that's public facing and a side that's private. That's why the one side has the ramps and the other side doesn't. But on that side, there's a park, and it's in the Quilta Parks that the city's going to do over the next few years. And we purposely had rights to block it off and use it, but we left it open, part of it, so people could come and see the progress. Because how do you say you're doing something for the community and not include them? Um, And I remember running one Saturday and seeing one of the steel workers with his three kids standing there at the fence, and he was pointing and showing them what he had done that week. And I realized we've we've done our jobs. This is what it's supposed to be. you can't, you pay people for the first 95%, but that last five you earn. And I've told my team that. Everybody on my team, you earn that respect. That's not given to you and you can't buy it. Where are you from again? You uh, from I grew here? up in Iowa. Um, and I came down to go to NEO and play baseball in uh, Oklahoma. And I was a two-year college. And then I came to the U of A to finish school. Okay. And then, and then that you, were you always an architect? Were you, were you? I'm not an architect. Oh, I mean, a uh, builder or a, what, um, what are you then? No, I'm, they call me a developer. Okay, I'm, there I'm, we go. I'm a, a big cat herder. Um, <laughs> no, I have different hats. Some days I sit with bankers and talk about financing for hours. Some days I sit in construction meetings. Um, some days I sit with architects. Um, some days I sit with tenants. Um, I guess I probably got a little OCD in me, so they're ADD, and that's why I have to do the job because it's, it's different every day. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, really try to, if, if, if I've had a blessing over the years, is that I can see talented people and I, I, I want to let them do what they do. Um, and I try not to get in their way. If you can get out of their way, most of the time people, if you give them a chance, they'll shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just got to put them in their lane and let them go. What were some of your first projects did you... Um, my first one that we built ground up was actually for a company called Shell Oil. Um, okay. I've heard of those guys. Yeah, they do oil. <laughs> um, and I remember it was, it was a little bit more unorthodox back then. And we got a 10 year lease with them and I was happy, man. I was 25 years old and I am, I'm a genius. They sent me their specs and I would cut the number, cut the deal. And I'm, man, I am smart. They sent me their spec sheet book. And I mean, it was a book four inches thick of how everything had to be done. Man, I thought I was going to die that first year trying to read through that book and make sure the building was built to that. But it was a great lesson. Um, always know what you're signing up for. And, and I got it done. And they were they were my tenant. Um, and I ended up actually 15 years selling everything. Um, still know a lot of the people there. My second tenant was uh, Exxon Oil. They saw what I did with Shell, and Exxon was one of my second tenants. Um, and I hope them NDAs are old enough. I don't get in trouble now. Uh, but it's all right. Anything you don't want, I can get, <laughs> we're editing this thing. Oh, so they're yeah. fine. They, they yeah. would probably be happy. They've, and, but I learned that we built garden style buildings, but the difference was just being there, showing up. Like if something was wrong, I was, I was there. Like it wasn't call this person in New York city and mm-hmm. wait on the hold. Like if something went wrong, you know, it was my, that was my deal. That was our family business. You know, I've, I've been fortunate that my, uh, Longest partner is uh, my wife, and for you know that was that was our family's money. Like we we never had huge family money. We don't neither one of us, and and what we did was ours. So you know 
if the sprinkler pipe broke on Saturday, we were there. That was <laughs> that was our family's livelihood. Uh, and you know, I think instilling that in the people you have working for you and that ownership, if you can do that, that's that will conquer about anything. Okay, so so you so you really built this whole thing. Everything that you have, you've you've kind of built from the ground up. Uh, yeah, I've had some really good partners along the way. Like I said, the main one's my wife, uh, Misty, but uh, I've had some partners that have been right about as long, about 20 years now. Um, we did a lot of nursing homes in Texas. Um, that was one part of what we did. And then I did office buildings uh, up here. Um, so I've got to learn very institutional-like development. I think we – one time I added up, I think we did together, we probably had about 50 or 60 nursing homes we did. Um, so it was very cookie-cutter, very stamped out. But – there's still some good learning there. Um, and uh, another good friend of mine did developments of uh, huge conference hotels. And he gave me some great advice. Brian Stebbins, a gentleman that passed away, did South Lake Dallas. Um, yep. And I got to learn some from him. Um, he did that little downtown square mm -hmm. down there. Yep. And Brian, I got to hang out with him. So I, I got to learn from so many cool people um, personally. Uh, and then somebody I got to do this project with was uh, we co-developed it with Blue Crane and Brenda Anderson was there at the time. Is still around, and and you know Brenda's been around town since she would tell you the date. It's back almost as long as I've been alive, I think. Um, and people like that, you just try to learn because you can just see their talents, and you just hope to soak some of it off them because they're so talented. Um, and it and don't get in their way. You know, I think um, the thing that makes it different is that I. I try to find the, the team we have in the building. Um, all of them people, a lot of them came to us. Um, if you do something special and different in the right way, it seems that good people will find you. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazing when everybody else was having trouble hiring people. We had people like walking in the door saying, Hey, I want to work here. Um, and that's cool. That's when you know that your team's done their job and, you know, the ownership group that I have a couple other partners in this building, all local people. And then my one partner, 20 years lives in North Carolina, but everybody else is local. And they believed that this was something good for the community. Mm -hmm. Like this was something to do where if somebody came and had a startup, they, this could be a viable option for them. Um, cause you have office, you have a place to work, you have a place to play, you have trails, you have nature everywhere, you have beautiful rivers. Um, and how could we put, this area on par with the Silicon Valleys, the San Francisco's, the Austin's of the world, Denver's. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating to see really what's happening. And like um and you've obviously been around Bentonville and all of this stuff since mm -hmm. since college. Yeah. Which I'm assuming is smooth as your skin is and my skin is. I'm sure we've we've that that was a little time ago. So um how has this how has this city changed and how do you I, because it's just such a cool vibe here that I know that everybody kind of wants to keep Bentonville the same. Like there's a culture here that kind of draws people in. Like you said, like, I mean, the I want to it's, it's just, you come in, you feel it, you want to be part of it. Um, where do you like, well, two things I want to know, are there cool things that you know about that are coming to town that other people may not know about, or if you're allowed to see even say, but like, what are the things that are happening in this town and where do you, where do you see this town going? Um, yeah, sadly, I know of a lot of things coming and they're just amazing. It's just the tip of the iceberg, but I can't talk about it. That's not my place. Um, that's theirs. But the things I see, it's just, I know that the next 10 years are going to be more transformational than the last 10. Um, and that's so cool. Um, it's cool because I have a 17 and 14 year old and I tell them every day, watch this. You'll never see this again in your lifetime. In anywhere else, anywhere um, in the world. And I think the cool part is, is that a lot of the um, pushing is from people that grew up here and understand. I think what people, I, I tell people all the time because they say, how is it? So what's the stickiness here? And I think we're stewards of it. I'm a steward of it. Um, I've been blessed to raise my kids in this community, but there was people here before that had community, um, the Don Tysons and the Mark Simmons of the world, um, Miss Hunt and her husband, JB, um, Mr. Walton. I mean, these people, we're all friends in the community. They they took care of each other. When one was in trouble, they may be their competitor during the day, but if they were really in trouble and it meant harm to their family or it could hurt them, they were the first people to be there for them. 
And that that's not the real that's not the world anywhere else I've seen it. Right. Um, and that was instilled. So you flew into XNA out in the middle of the cow pasture. Has anybody ever told you why it was there? No. So there was a meeting. It's because something called the Northwest Arkansas Council. And there's a map, and I think they still have it. Hopefully, they still have it. P- Nelson may tell you, Nelson Peacock may he has it hidden somewhere, probably. But there's a map, and it's signed by J.B. Hunt, Mr. Walton, um, Mr. Tyson, and they said we don't need this to be a Fayetteville, a Bentonville, or a thing. We need it to be a regional airport for us all to grow. That's why it's not in any town, is because they all had close to the same access to it. Oh wow! And it would help them all grow because they saw it as a region, as 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 NWA. Um, not Tyson and Springdale or Bentonville and Walmart or, you know, Mark Simmons out in Siloam. It's, they, they said, hey, how can we do this where our region grows? And just that whole approach and concept, that's community. That's saying I'm going to put the, uh, somebody else's needs before mine. It, that was one of the stories also that, like, always kind of captivated me. Like, you know, you know, it's not like I, you know, I grew up like a lot of people here, you know, Walmart, because it's kind of just in the world or, you know, Tyson or, you know, J.B. Hunt. You know, it's not something we talked about, but coming here, um, one of the and it's not a story. It's more about like this town was built and I forget where they used to sit. You can tell me that. But like that every certain day of like once a month or every week that J.B. Hunt and um, Tyson and um, Sam Walton would all go to get, they would all sit down and they would literally plan how they wanted to build the city. I, and, and it was the, it was what is, I think now what you're referring to is what's the Northwest Arkansas council. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what okay, they so do. That's what that, that is what say- that is. Yeah. It's uh, Nelson Peacock runs it. Uh, Marshall Savage is the chairman of it now. Um, and their whole goal is to, how can we promote the region? And then were the guys, that's who has the map that they all signed. It said, we're going to do it here. And they signed it that day. That's what it's the council. It's Northwest Arkansas council. It's fascinating. Yeah. That, that, that three guys that were buddies. Um, well, just, now, and I don't know, I think, I don't know if they're on the council. I know they're very active. And I know Mr. Walton is, Mr. Jim is, but Tom and Stuart are too. Does that make sense? So, they're, so one of them's grandchildren are active in that same right. thing. And that's the, you know, the sense of, I, I'm, my families aren't, but, uh, but you, you take that and you look at it and go, look, that's how we treat everybody. And if you, if, if we all do that, we will continue to have the place that we have now. You know, and, and the, you know, not to keep harping on this, but it is amazing when you kind of, they know that there's big growth, something, and mm-hmm. you see these, you know, they're tearing up, they're putting on huge news. I'm assuming it's like sewers or water treatment. They're, they're, they're planning for the future in big ways. And then you see things like Detroit and like all yeah. the things that are happening with the water and, you know, people aren't playing Mississippi. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. I, I, I knew I was saying the wrong place. Um, cause that's what I do. Um, <laughs> it's kind of my thing. Um, but you see the, uh, you see how people didn't plan or that they were like, well, we see there's a problem, but we're not going to address it right now. And to see these people that really, you know, how, ha- you know, they have the means they, they, they are, they are fortunate to be able to do it, but they're not, they're not here. To keep taking from people. They're really like developing and building the coolest. Look at the headquarters. That is like a, People, I mean, we, we don't even, we haven't even talked about it yet. And that right. project in any other town in the world would be all you talked about. Right. Uh, it's an amazing That's campus. That is quite crazy. I mean, think about that. And speaking of everybody, just so many, because everybody uh, might not know what we're talking about, Walmart headquarters. Walmart has a headquarters here. It looks like it's 300 not, some acres. It's, amazing. Yeah, but this new headquarters is for now. They, and you, please tell me if I come uh-huh. because I just take information yeah. and I regurgitate it as if I'm a pro um, that I know everything. Um, but when, from what somebody told me that, how many acres is the new? I think it's 300 and some. Is it is insane how f- large this place is. Lakes and, and ponds and That's nature. what I was going to say. They said it's going to be nicer than the Google headquarters. Is what I've heard. Uh, yeah, it, it will. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're not going to be embarrassed for anybody from Google to walk around that campus. I'll never say one's better than the other, but we'll let the people decide. So, sorry, Google, you can come on soon, uh, or you got to build a new building because Walmart's about to crush you. Hey. Um, <laughs> and the, and but that is the ultimate for that family to say, um, "Hey, we have this, and we're going to reinvest in Northwest Arkansas." Because I lived, I, I was growing, I didn't live there, but I lived through the times when uh, I don't know if you remember AT and T used to be in um, San Antonio. I did not. I mean, AT, I AT&T that, used to be in San Antonio, right downtown, beautiful buildings. Um, and they pulled out because they wanted to be closer to an international airport, went to Dallas, DFW. 
Okay. Um, and it killed the town. I mean, just, I mean, struggled. San Antonio struggled terribly downtown. Um, uh, almost just, you just walk and around as a ghost town. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. Um, and for them to say, you know, there's probably places with better airports. Um, there's probably, you know, there's these things, but they said, no, we're going to invest in this community because we see we can have talent. And if we can have the most talented people, we'll have an amazing company. Um, you know, and, and for a company to be that insightful and that looking forward, it's just amazing to me to go, look, we'll invest in where if we can get talented people, everybody wins um, because right. talent feeds talent. And then it all iron sharpens iron. Uh, it's as old as the age is. And that's what, that's what a lot of this, I think, and I don't want to speak for anybody in that family or Walmart, but I think a lot of what you see and we enjoy is to invest in that company for the next 30 years. Yeah, so it's it, relevant. Yeah. It, I mean, I just, I'm luckily enough to have bought a little piece of property right across the street from the headquarters. And I look across the street and I'm like, I may be the luckiest guy <laughs> in the world right now to see all the things that are happening. Um, I can't wait to see, you know, I hope I'm around, but like my son just chose where he's going to go to school. Um, he is a senior this year. So he, he said, I, he gave a list. I don't think he's, he went to, he wanted to look at uh, Boulder, UC, Colorado. He wanted to look at Texas, Austin, um, Norman, OU, and of course the U of A. And he went and looked at his tours. We spent time at all of them. And, you know, he's like, dad, I'm going to go to the U of A. And I don't know if he'd have made that decision 15 years ago, 20 right. years ago. Um, so, you know, and, and if you've noticed, there's investments in the schools too, from all these companies, oh. Tyson and Walmart and the Walton family privately. Um, so they're making it where they're making a dream for me. Does that make sense? My son's going to go that? 30 minutes away to school you get the and have a great another. education. Yeah. And I, it, it, and now I think the next push of like our office, all these other things, we're trying to make it where we keep them now. When they go to school, they don't go back to Texas. Maybe they stay here and they go, Hey, this is really cool here. I've got access to the great outdoors. I can get a great job. Cost of living is very reasonable, and I'm staying. You know, and so it's kind of a path. But if they, if that can keep being done with everybody doing what's going on, we'll win as a community. Yeah, it's 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 just I I just love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, do you have? I I mean, I'm sure you do, and I and I'm not going to put you on the spot because we'll okay. edit whatever. But. Um, do you have any, whether it's secondhand stories or whatever, about those guys back in the day or anything cool about, like? I have one, you know, sometimes folklore is folklore, so I'll, I'll put it at that. This is not my story. Okay, great. But I heard this story, and I think it describes a community, and I hope. <laughs> I may get a call from Mark Simmons. He may say, hey, Joshua. <laughs> but I think that there was a, um, uh investigative report done on a company here, and it was a 2020 thing. You know how they do the secret yeah, cameras back in the day. And I have a mother. Worst. Mothers watch 2020. You know, it's the worst. This is the worst. Um, I think it was probably a chicken plant. Worst chicken plant in the world and this and that. And guys, tank stop. Contracts got canceled. And a competing chicken company, the owner of it, called him up and said, hey, um, I want to buy all your product at, at, at the full price. And he's like, what? And he's like, that was a cheap shot. That wasn't right. Uh, we all know that was BS. He goes, uh, I, I, you need you need to get through this. And he could have probably broke him and bought the company, but he saved. Oh, his so you're company. saying just, just his competitor bought it? But like, so 2020 uncovered. They did. Like a, they, they did. They, they went into a chicken plant and none. Of and them it was just pretty, one of them. It was just one of them, but none of them were pretty anyway. And it was you know they do their thing. They're selling TV. It, it yep. is what it is. Um, and and it it a lot of contracts got canceled, pulled this and that, and and his competitor called up and said, I'll buy it all. It, Full price, you know. I know you guys are good guys, and you're my neighbors. And uh, bought it all, saved the company probably. Um, you know, that's that's what Northwest Arkansas is about. Yeah, that that's it's incredible. Like, cause you do. I mean, I'm a big fan of the um, the show uh, Succession. Oh yeah, I've not seen that, but I saw they won oh, some stuff last night. I so seen good, it. you should totally watch it. It it actually taught me a little about the stock market and all that kind of <laughs> stuff about people like t overtaking companies and all that kind of stuff. And it's brutal. Like those guys oh, yeah. are all ruthless. And to think that like in this little community there was like you know three guys that you know just well, there was more than that. Oh, of I mean, course, yeah. yeah, there was you know, and I think it it just it it, it oozes through. Like you can't. I mean, it, it you can go to about anywhere and and. There's 
good people everywhere in these communities, um, which is so cool. I think I'm thinking through all the different, you know, the family owned banks I know here in town that, that are local Arkansas, you have, um, and they're all just good people. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's still a small town. So if people aren't good people, it doesn't take long to get. It doesn't around. take long. Um, people know who you are. Yeah. I feel like I yeah. know nine. I, mean, I feel like I know <laughs> as many people here as I do in Hollywood for 25 years. I mean, I literally, That's I'm good. an outward going guy and I, I like to shake hands and I like to meet people. Um, but I swear, I, I, I walk down the streets now and it's like, Hey, what's going yeah. on? Hey, and I love it. I mean, I can't, yeah, you're going to you know, see somebody if you, if you don't do right by them, you'll see them. Oh again. yeah. And that's, and you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm a good guy. So I think yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I feel like I'm pretty good. I'll do something stupid. So, and people, we but, all make mistakes, but you know, I'll, I'll definitely embarrass myself, but usually it'll be a good time in, in yep. the, uh, in the whole thing of it. Um, but uh, oh, one more thing I want. I, well, a few more things I want to talk about. I want to talk about this. Let me show you, buddy. So I scanned. Well, I want to talk about two things. Okay. You can talk about the art first, or we can talk sure. about what happens after you scan this little code. And there, there's a bunch of different um, things that happen when you scan. So you have to tell me what happens with that one, because and I'll tell you some of them that are coming. Oh wait, they so uh, they all do something different. Well, there. I don't know what phase. So there's. I know the phases that are coming out. Um, we'll start. We'll go back to that. I'll tell you okay. about the art. The art okay. is another great story. So um, our architect, Michelle Rochkin, was in town. He, he loves, he, uh, if you ever have time, look him up. It's amazing. It's like the architect of the What's century from Mexico, Michelle Rochkin. Okay. Um, he was a signed by Virgin Records at 18 as a professional drummer. He was a rock star. Wow. Okay. Then he Good was time. a mountain bike racer, professional mountain bike racer. And then he went to architecture school. His father's a famous doctor in Mexico, and he's an amazing architect. Um, he had a friend that came in with him named Stefan Sagmeister, and he had done... Stefan was very humble, but I started looking him up, and he'd done like album covers for the Stones, for Aerosmith, for I mean everybody. He'd done Ben and Jerry's ice cream. He and he retired, and he was done. He gave his firm to a woman so that the largest graphic design firm in the world would be a woman-owned business, and walked away. That's amazing. And and so Stefan was in. He was, just came in to ride bikes, and he was riding bikes around. And he saw this artist over here at the moment. I called the guy up, did a FaceTime. I was like, I, you were in Bentonville. I'm in Bentonville. And he's this big Austrian guy, about six, six. He, uh, Nick cave had something. He's good friends with Nick had something at momentary. And he's just like, I want to do something here. And I'm like, okay. So we rode the next morning and it was a fluke, but we rode the next morning and we were having coffee over at the meteor and it was cold. There's ice on the handlebars. It was too cold. We shouldn't have been riding, having a cup of coffee. And, and, uh, Another friend of mine um, that's in my peer group that is, is, happens to be one of the owners, or I won't say, walked up and was having coffee with us. And he's like, y'all rode this morning? We're like, yeah. He's like, dude, that's, that's, that's hard, man. That's, that's awesome. And, and I introduced him to everybody, and Stefan said, I want to do something. And he's like, yeah. So Stefan came back uh, a few weeks later and sent us his presentation. Um, and at first I was like, how are we going to be able to afford this guy? Like, and it, was, it was a penance what he charged us. And uh, he was these bugs carrying these jewels. And the concept was is that when he was here, we had a helicopter tour. And everywhere we landed and went, there was these bugs. And everybody was like, oh, there's bugs everywhere. And he's like, these bugs are beautiful. Like, he, he lives in New York, and he was like, these bugs are amazing here. Oh, so the, so the bugs that are on the on each of these stickers. They're all what? Arkansas native bugs. They're Ar I figured that, yeah. you know. Yeah, and he was like, so his his... And I, I hope I don't so butcher fun. this, Stefan. If you watch this, I'm gonna try my best. That's all right. Uh, we'll with the Austrian accent, accent with the later. Austrian accent, it sounds amazing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that the bugs are something that people step on and and look down on, and and but as a community, when they work together, they're carrying these things that people value so much. These jewels, and they're carrying them up the ramp. So there's a hundred, around a hundred of them carrying them up the ramp, and at the top they lay a saying in jewels that says, "Now is better." And through the pandemic and through all the things he's done in New York and Vancouver, it was he's taken this concept of now is better and is there is the vaccines are better. Now is better. COVID, COVID if it was 100 years ago, could have killed, you know, so Everything. many millions more people. Now is better. Pregnancy. Um, people that childbirth used to be very, very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now with our medicine and what we've learned, now is better. And mm -hmm. he, it's really neat to think about all these things. So it says now is better. So we're sitting around and I'm like, you know, and, and the other guy that, that I was talking about, he's like, yeah, I like it. Man. This is cool. So and wait a second. So so, so he, he had created a, this is the pan. So when you're saying like goes up the. 
The so the bugs are carrying these these jewels up the ramps, all the way up the switchbacks to the top and on the sixth on, floor on the patio. Like currently, right now. On the patio. Yeah, okay. well, and I'm going to get to how they did it. Just but are minute. they painted? Or are they? That's a great question, because oh, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I'm, I'm like, are we painting this on the concrete? What are we doing? He's like, oh, no. No. <laughs> He's like, a good friend of mine I've skied with since I was two. His name's Michael Meyer. He's a fifth-generation mosaic from Munich, Germany. And I'm like. Oh boy! Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, uh, uh, you I'm know, like, wait I'm a minute. I'm in charge of the budget. Yeah, class. it's like I'm in charge of the budget committee. Is really in is like these Vene Venetian tile that they hand make the tile, bust them into the little pieces, and then make these mosaics in Munich, Germany. This family. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, it got around. Like we were looking at it, and um, the mosaics are actually um, Ozart, another. Like you say, things just come around, and, uh -huh. and Ozart said, "We want the community to have this. We will this. We will take this installation on." So we went talked to the concrete guys. And I talked to a guy that poured concrete that morning. He said, "We got to get these mosaics in the concrete somehow." And back to putting people in a lane. He's not an engineer somewhere, an architect. This is the guy that pours hundreds of yards of concrete every day. The best Naples concrete guy they got, Andy. And Andy goes, let me work on it for a few weeks. He came back and figured out that if we could get them cut within a millimeter and get a vector file from Germany as they made all these one-off bugs, he could lay these butcher blocks in the concrete and spray mold on them, get a new exact one to pull them, and then there would be an imprint for these mosaic tile to lay in and they could grout them in. And this whole process is done. I also love that the concrete guy has got a concrete name. Uh, Andy, the Andy is guy. the concrete guy. Andy, the concrete he guy is, guy concrete is exactly guy. what I think. I think he's over on an unnamed project doing a lot of concrete right now. Uh, after he left our building, he went to the really big project because Andy's the guy you want. Okay. Uh, well, he's yeah, that yeah. guy. Okay. Andy, uh, Andy, the concrete but, guy. So now there's, because of community, like Ozart and them guys, you know, Elizabeth and them doing this, as you walk up the public ramps, you will see all these mosaics that were handmade in Munich, wow. Germany by a family from a design from Stefan for anybody to go and see and take pictures of and look at and admire. Wow. That's to that's me, the stuff we haven't seen yet. That's the stuff we can't yeah. even see. That's, 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 that's still behind the, 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 the it, next middle of next month, go walk the ramp and you'll see all these bugs. And they start in the sidewalk. They go through the breezeway right by where you can pick the coffee up at the window, you know, right past the local uh, up optometrist. Allison is uh -huh. a great optometrist in Fayetteville. She's going to have a little shop. Specialized will be right there. There's one more named unnamed tenant on that side that comes out, I think, later this month. And then you turn and walk up the ramps. And as you're, you're following this cool little discovery of all these beautiful mosaics, um, and then it comes to the top, and there's probably 40 feet across the saying up there of these mosaics that says, now is better. And you're on six floors up looking over downtown Bentville. And that's great. Now, what, and one more time, just because I, I, so the bugs, they're local and they're carrying the gyms just, and that symbolizes that they, they're, People, people believe the gems are the most valuable thing, but it's really the message that's what's valuable. What our community does with the treasures we have is uh, more important than the treasures. True that. I didn't come I up with that, man. See, I no, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you know like, that's way above my head. You're just a pretty face behind uh, that. You know, that's like, the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, so then I scanned it. Yeah. Um, what happened when you scanned yours? So I scanned mine and it told me where all the, um, it told me the location of where all the. No okay, so it was a treasure hunt one. Okay, perfect. It's a treasure hunt run. Yeah. Awesome. There was 13 of them, I think. Uh, we wanted to get people going out to local businesses. Um, right. So we put them with all the great local partners. That are all great people, and I couldn't name them all now. Um, yeah, no, it, it, uh, it, it basically took you to all the hot spots. It took you to great uh, the momentary. It actually awesome. took you to your home office. It took you to the bank. Um, awesome. It took you to. Um, That's sad. I don't even know where it took you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, you know it, the ledger when it opens, it'll take good, you there. And, good. Oh my god, I'm just spacing at all the cool, uh, uh, the you know uh, the meteor. The I think yeah, I can. I mean, I should scan it right now, and I can just tell you. Right, well, it's it's neat too because what. I, the I'm kids are going to love it too. Oh, and by the way, I'm for sure so going to, and you win cool. prizes if you mail it in. And I was like, Aaron, we're going to do this. Yeah. So totally I'm not sure what the prize is, but it'd be cool. I bet. Yeah. It, they, they, it the matter. team I have is just amazing. They I just, love, no, I just want to get the, they, I, they I just love that. And we have some great partners, you know, like we've been able to give away great things for specialized, um, all the time. Um, so what will be coming? And I hope I'm not spoiling a lot, but some of this. So I was sitting there one day and like, I want people to experience a building. Like, We've had some marketing here and there, but not a lot. And I, I've always, you're going to see this come out is that what you'll, some of them cards that will come in is I'll hand you one in a couple months 
and it'll be a day pass to go work in there for a day, just like oh, a member. Cool. And you scan it, and they scan it at the front desk. You scan it, it says, a free day at the ledger. Go work there. Or it could be a free hour or two in a conference room. And I want people to go experience it. So that's why I wasn't sure what yours, <laughs> but right. I said, so that's how we're going to ex get people to experience this because I, I could tell you all about it all day long, but go feel it, go see it. Like there's so many more talented, but for me just to try to tell you is just such an injustice, like go experience what all these people have put into and, and go see it. And here, here's a, a card and just scan that and go experience it because I oh, believe God, the so building. Each, so each of these little, little thingies, each of the little uh, QR whatever, codes, QR change. codes, yeah, they're not the same. So it's not. Well, so the, them may be the ones, but that, that the was ones that for the, that was for the the um, treasure hunter the, the that they had. Then there'll be some coming out where we'll have cards, and it'll be for different things, um, and and we'll put them in certain places with people and strategic partners, and we we just want people to go experience it because. You know, we kind of felt like the community did that with us. They had to put up with the road closures. They had to put up with the noise. And we yeah. want to give back and let them see, hey, this is something that was given back to the community. It's really, it's really cool. What are you most proud of when it comes to this bill? Well, let's, before I get into that, let's get into this thing's about to open. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, you guys are cranking right now. I yeah. mean, you have got, it's the, full, the team's it's amazing full down tilt there. over there right now. The construction now. I mean, team is, yes, running. They are running. I mean, they are, and everybody looks happy. I got to be honest with you. I, yeah. I stop for them and they cross that little street with their little pails. We've, and we've got very good crews. We're very fortunate because I've been here long enough and I know the guys that are really good. Um, and a lot of the owners of the companies I know, and um, we we're fortunate we have the A team. You know, everybody has probably some better teams, some better crews that are better than others. And we got the A team from everybody. Um, it was really cool. And for them, it was like an all-star project because the electrician is the best electrician team next to the best HVAT team. So they don't have to tell them their jobs like on lots of jobs they're on. Does Got that make it. sense? Yep. It was like an all-star team. That's great. Yeah, it was really neat. And um, I know that you had told me how proud of you are of all the features in the building. Like everything is just done to the... I want people to see it, but there's every... All the cabinets were hand were made here in Arkansas. Um, we didn't order them off some magazine. Um, Napoles cabinetry, and they had a. This is the first I think to come out of their new shop. They built a new facility just to start doing projects like this that were landmark legacy projects. Um, every one of them cabinets was made in Conway and brought up here and trucked up here, packaged and put in by them same people. Um, the a lot of the wood I can't remember the percentage, so I'm not going to lie, but a lot of the wood was Arkansas wood. Um, just the, 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 the different, the copper on the building is real copper. Um, we had a capital stack and owners that understood when I explained to them that if you let me buy things before I should, it's going to help us in the end. And, and especially with COVID, it saved us, but like the copper I keep track of, and it was almost, we bought it. And it's got there's a lot of copper on that building. If you have a lot of copper, a lot of copper, it's, it's basically covered in copper. It's, and that was part copper of and glass. Yeah. And, and just a re, you did that because it keeps, and this is, it seems to be kind of an ongoing Arkansas thing. You guys are trying to keep the, uh, the visual imprint, I guess, yeah. nature. Like you guys want to keep it earthy. And when you walk up at the, the, por the, the, the ledges of the porches, um, are kind of like the overcaves. If you go hiking out in a different place out by the Buffalo river uh -huh. and that nature feel of copper, copper's a living thing. It'll change a little bit. Uh, we had it stop frozen where it'll only change 10% compared to the hundred percent. Most copper does, but it's still going to change. So every year it'll change a little bit and grow as the building grows and the community grows. And yeah, it's a soft, it's a living material. Um, but the copper alone, I think was quadrupled in price from when we bought it. So uh -huh. I, you know, that would have been a hard we still have to have a business at some point. So it would have been hard to <laughs> spend that now. Um, but everything just worked out and, and everybody said, oh yeah, that makes sense. And that makes sense. And, you know, we've, we treated all of our partners in that part aspect, all of our construction partners with respect. There were some increases that, you know, we didn't make them eat. Um, we understood what happened during COVID and we, we tried to work with them and be good partners because we want them there next time. Right. Yeah. It's, it, it was tough times. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I'm glad COVID happened. I mean, we built I'm this here, but. straight up through COVID. The whole, I mean, it was almost the whole project was in COVID. Um, 
And Were you nervous at ever because of it being a workspace and with COVID happening? Or I guess that got you more excited? By the time we enclosed it in the last few months. So it was actually the safest place <laughs> to go because it was open. So there was air. And you're six stories up. The wind blows up there. Right. So it wasn't, um, you know, we had to do some virtual meetings and that. But it was never that really um, dangerous on the job because it wasn't oh, I just, I meant I meant more about like, just like. I mean, the world shut down and like, yeah. you know, just about finishing the project, I guess, or it was, um, you know, or it being the right idea. Always, I guess you I said, still worry. But it's now it's the right idea that COVID helped the idea. I was worried, um, I guess somewhat about, I mean, it was hard because engineering firms and architecture firms were shutting down. Um, but we had earned the respect of our teams and they were working at home on it. Um, we had, Sometimes I had I literally had architects and engineers coming to my office because their office would be closed, and I had fast enough in there that they could do it because they couldn't do it from home, but they wanted to finish because they were part of that team and they didn't want to let the rest of the team down. That's very cool. Yeah, I, it, you can't speak enough about the people. Um, there's thousands of people that have put their talents into that building. Um, that's why I, you know, I'm just humbled by the true what they can do. It's it's amazing. When does this thing open? I know that, mm -hmm. you know, like you, one reason I was, by the way, Sue, I, and I think I may have said this in the beginning, having you on here, I, first off, thank you so much oh, because no, it's, it's really, it's really cool because you are, you know, one thing I wanted to do the, the, what, the reason why I wanted to do the show is because I, I came here and there's so many people in this community doing such cool things. Yeah. And I feel like the community kind of knows what's going on, but I really wanted to introduce the people that are creating such a great community to the community itself, because I think we all are kind of in awe of what's happening. And we really want to understand who these people are and why they're doing it and why they're doing such cool things. Um, so when does this thing open, man? Um, the first members will move in October 17th, barring some I mean, catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's, it's, they're finishing up. Um, should, so by the end of October, you should anybody should be able to walk over there and walk up the ramps um, around Halloween time. It's a beautiful time. October if, if, for people that aren't here is uh, one of my favorite months. It's the best mountain biking month. Um, it's the perfect weather. It's usually about mid seventies in the day, fifties at night. Um, October is one of our banner years. You notice a lot of the mountain bike races are during then. Um, people can stroll down, go walk up the ramps, see it. And we're, we're staging different things. So like the event space will become available first to next year. We have a beautiful event space up on six, um, that overlooks downtown. Uh, it's about 20,000 feet. I think you can have 999 people up there at once. Wow. Um, That's a lot of people, you know, uh, Too but we're hard. trying to, I really have really, really tried to instill in my staff that we're not opening everything at once because what people are experiencing, that's very important to me. So we're putting, the people on two, the co-working people in first. Uh, we have some larger tenants that are going to take a whole floor. They'll come next year. Um, the event space will come next year. Conference rooms will, eh, we'll sprinkle them in at the end of the year. Um, let people start booking them. Um, only book them every other hour to make sure we do it right and everybody has a really good experience. Um, make sure that we're doing what's got all of us here, um, taking care of people. Um, because it's weird that office has such a hospitality side to it now. Uh, but it does. Um, mm -hmm. And I really, you know, I'm not a hospitality guy, uh, but I do want people taken care of. Uh, so we want to make sure that when we open, it's it'll be it'll be kind of slow and, and methodical when we do it. Um, but I would rather take my time because I want to be right. All right. Well, I guess one last question. Sure. What are you most proud of in this whole thing? It's not like, because I want you to keep talking as much as you want. Yeah. So most proud of i'm most proud that the process that's so unorthodox to tell a contractor and subcontractors they have the job um the put the operations team in with the architects and engineers in the beginning to the whole that the, the whole process worked um, i'm very proud of, of how it came out and what it instilled in everybody, the ownership that got created from all the people um, and letting that work itself out. That's what I was most proud of is how they can be done still. Um, so many things these days are done where an architect draws a plan. They hand it to the general contractor. They forget to draw things, their scope gap. They make them eat it. 
They bid it hard. They get the lowest number they possibly can. The guy may not be in business next year. I, I don't believe in that process. I think it's anti what we are in Northwest Arkansas so that the process and, and I love the other owners I have that had the faith to say, yeah, this, you know, this will work. Um, and it took a leap of faith on everybody's part, but that's what I'm most proud of is that then people, if you walk that job, um, you should go down and tour the building before it's done. Um, you'll see the camaraderie between all these different subs that have no connection. Um, and that to me is what I'm most proud of that they interact with my team, that the team that will be running the building interacts with the construction team that interacts with the architecture and design team. Um, that parts, that's what I'm most proud of. Is there anything else about Bentonville that I guess just that, that you're excited to see or that you're thinking about, or I'm excited to see what I, 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 like I said, I probably know more than I should about what's coming, but I'm excited to see about the people and the mines. And, and one of the things of the building that I, I will, you'll see me lurking somewhere around there, sitting there just having coffee because I want to see the interactions from somebody that comes from a Fortune 1 company that used to be stuck in like a prison. Right. That's talking to a guy that's a startup that moved here from Silicon Valley because he got a free bike from the NWA council or something. Right. I want to see them casual interactions and what will come from it, the innovation that we could possibly have in this community. That's what I want to see. That would be cool to me. Well, is there anything else, man? Like I, I, uh, I've really, uh, this is such a cool opportunity to like get to know you. Oh, I thank mean, you. It's a really a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to kind of getting anybody and everybody in this seat and, you know, so yeah. feel free to spread the word and try to get, you know, there's so to many more people that, does, that you should talk to that have so much more to do with moving this community than me. And, uh, and, and, you know, Oh, I know. I got one more thing. What's your question? I want to talk about Format Fest a little bit. Format. Beautiful. Are you going? Absolutely. Dude, I love that thing. Yeah. Uh, that group, um, I'm glad. It's, it's awesome. I mean, we're going to have a, a music festival here. Um, three days. Uh, amazing I mean, bands. I, I can't wait. Uh, it's so strange, though, by the way. It's it like, you know, you live in Hollywood, whatever, and everybody's going to Coachella, and they're going yeah. to... Um, Whatever. Uh, what's the other one? What's the, Josh, uh, Josh. Burning Man. Burning Man. Burning Just Man. Just happened a couple then, weeks ago, yeah. And then the guy that's part of this is the Lollapalooza guy? Is that, I think so. I think C3, that, that's what I've heard. I okay, think that's what it is, it, yeah. Um, and I, uh, maybe out of Austin, maybe something to do with uh, ACL. Yeah. I don't know, something. Whatever. But yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's. I mean, for our little town, to, and, and I, it's just amazing. And have you seen the venue? No, I haven't. Oh, if anybody knows Price Coffee, we're a little sugar out there. So I'm partial. I actually live on... Um, uh, my property touches little sugar and oh, I live up on the top. Good, it's be so I'll time. look off the bluff and see it below, but um, I love a little sugar. It's where all the gravel rides in the world start from. As it seems like there's trails out there. Um, yeah. It's very exciting to see. I mean, it's one of the most, you, if you ever get a chance to drive out 72 and just drive down a road called price coffee, that's where it's going to be. Is 72 J uh, street. You take it? 72 out towards a uh, river girl out. Um, yes. Yeah, Central, you know, Central. Yeah. Just take Central out of town. You okay. go about two miles. That is 72. Yeah, I yeah, had yeah. This argument 72. with my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, is Central called 72 yep. or whatever. That's it. Was, okay. You go out, like just out going north. You go about two miles out and you drop, and there's a little horse farm where they do um, um, psychiatry horses, where they do medicine with horses there. Like it's amazing. Miss Swanson's farm. They do um, what? They, the people, they have therapists that have the kids ride horses because it's therapeutic oh, for them. And got talk it, to got them it, got it. Okay. Amazing place right there and right next to it behind it. There's this huge, beautiful valley. The sun sets at the back of it. You need to see it. It's amazing. Okay. Um, it's just, it's the probably one of the bigger valleys around here, and it's in that valley. It's just going to be – it will be an amazing setting. And, I mean, the the bands that are coming, uh, just one of them would be an amazing show. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm real stoked. Yeah. I'm, I'm real stoked. I was going to – I actually turned down a job recently, and I was just like, you know what? I always seem to jump on a job and I go live and I was like, my life is so good right now. <laughs> and my girlfriend bought me these tickets for my birthday. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to work. You know, obviously I'm doing this and this yeah. is something I'm, I'm kind of doing this as a passion and trying to, you know, get some things going. But, you know, I've turned down a job because I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this format fest. Yeah. I'm going to go and probably be able to ride Halloween. your e-bike out there. Oh yeah. I'm going to already got the path outline. They got bike valet. I mean, that's so awesome. Oh, really? They're going to have a bike? They're going to figure the bike thing? Yeah, to, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You'll just go, yep, they've already got it marked out. If you go on there, I think it's on the website um, where okay. they have the, the how, to, how to ride your bike out to it. They have bike valet there. 
Um, oh, bike valet. Yeah. I had already thought about like, you know, even though yeah. I, even though I, I, I promise I'm you. I'm not I, speaking, but that's what it said. So I can't guarantee that. that, that yeah, I know. They well, will. either if there's bike valet, either which it'll, way, it'll have but valet. I got to tell you, people have been making fun of me because uh, just recently I, <laughs> I went to the Walmart over here at the downtown Mittenwell Walmart and I did a Instagram story and I left my computer bag in the front of my, in front, in the, in the basket of my e-bike. And I just was like. I'm not even worried. It's going to be here when I get back. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? And I was like, dude, I'm just telling you, I just like to test the water. So I yeah. go because I just don't believe it's going to get stolen. I just I don't. don't I just don't. sadly don't even have a bike lock on my bike. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, I just think it's so funny. It's so funny. Um, I've never been in a town where you truly believe that, like, you can keep you. Well, sorry, all the criminals. I hope I didn't, like, bring yeah, you here. Let's, but, let's, um, let's, we'll cut this out. We're yeah. just going to. Tulsa's gonna, a great place to go for all the criminals. <laughs> Tulsa's really, there's really expensive stuff there. <laughs> yeah, really, it's, it's a beautiful because people and like it you know it's, it's yeah it permeates everything people watch out for everything yeah um, they really do i it, was sitting on a bike rack the other day um uh, and i was having a beer with a friend and somebody backed up and backed into a bike rack and the bike and like five guys from the parking lot swarmed and stopped the car before they could leave to make sure that they gave their insurance and their name to the person's bike they hit these just random strangers but they saw it happen they, were like, uh, they stopped them yeah no, they, they no, no, got no, in front no, of the no, car no, we're no, like no 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 no, 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 no. Uh, we do the right thing here yeah it's it was really <laughs> we were laughing as oh, we were sitting there really like funny only in bentonville yeah only in bentonville i'm telling you man well i'm not gonna keep you i know you got a lot uh, of good things it. going on man thank you so much for coming you thank know. you um it's been a good time well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to The Good Times Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody. Good times, everybody.